Now remember, if you want them to play at a function you're interested in, just come see me after service. <clears throat> I'm going to make a statement that uh, involves a guarantee. Now we don't do guarantees much in our day and age, but if you will follow this message with the five C's, I can guarantee and you follow it totally with a heart, you won't fall. And the reason why is it's going to involve our heart. Our heart is what's involved in walking with God trusting Him, and being obedient to Him. Uh, so, starting out our message in a slow manner, because last week my wife was very intense about going too quickly. Uh, she's going to put a little electrode on my person, so if I go too fast, I will know to slow that down. Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden. We read this. Amen. Uh, in the cool of the day, God spent time with Adam and Eve. We know that since that time, it hasn't happened to that extent. Yet God still wants to walk with us. And we believe in the new kingdom we will walk with God again. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 59, 2 brings out the, the reason why we cannot walk with God as we used to in the Garden of Eden. I'm talking about mankind. Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that you will not hear. Now, we can't walk with God unless we hear his voice. So, we're going to go through five C's that are going to help us to see how we can walk with God. So first of all, let's go to Genesis, the fifth chapter. We're going to look at two men that did walk with God. And then we're going to go into First and Second Chronicles. And we're going to see how God made the plan for man to start walking with Him. <clears throat> Genesis 5, verses 21 and 22. Verse 21, it says, And Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And here we go. And Enoch, what? Walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Well, I would like in this life to say, well, he walked with God for 50 years. That'd be pretty good. So he walked with God. Let's go to the next chapter, Genesis 6. And I like that term, walked with God. It's, it is a, a, I can't say two person, but it is a two figure uh, walk here. We are walking with God. That means wherever he's walking, we're going with him. Amen. It's not that he's going to walk with us where we're going. Right. We need to walk with him. Genesis 6, verses 6 to 9. Starting with verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Can you imagine that? God felt sorry for making man, Amen. that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Can you, this, we can just take that and say, well, you know, this is what the, we, I think we need to read into the Bible sometimes. And I think God was broken over what he was going to have to do. Do you think he wanted to destroy all those people? So this was grieving his heart. Whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast. Huh? It doesn't say women there. Maybe. No, I'm just joking there. And the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repents me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now we like to say, Mo, uh, Moses presented the law, but Jesus brought grace. But I think that statement's incorrect. Because it says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect, that means mature, in his generations. And here we come to the point again. And Noah walked with God. Amen. Brethren, I want to say something to you that I think is not too much on the exaggeration part. God wants to walk with us. Amen. Every one of us. In his own particular way with us. Because God created us with different personalities, we're not all quirky like I am. God walks with each one the way He created us to walk with Him. Now, can you understand that? My walk will not be the same as yours, but it'll be holy and awesome in its own means. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 17, verses 6 to 8. We're going to see how God, up to, from, let's go, Adam and Eve at the fall, all the way up to David's time, what God was doing in the background. We don't see it, and yet God is going to tell us what He was doing. 1 Chronicles 17, Verses 6 to 8. 1 Chronicles 17, verses 6 to 8. And I like this. We can say, well, what was God doing in the Old Testament? Was all he was was this mean, old, cantankerous man with a stick that would beat you when you did something wrong? That's the way some people view uh, God in the, in the Old Testament. But that's not the truth. Okay, so 1 Chronicles 17, verses 6 to 8. Now look, this is what I love about him. He wants to walk with us. He doesn't want to scare us to death to walk with us. He wants us to be in a loving relationship, walking with him. I'm glad you said amen to that. Verse 6. And this is God speaking. Wheresoever I have walked, see, I have walked with all Israel. Not some of Israel. He says all of Israel. Right? Spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedars? Now let's just stop on verse 6. He is talking about walking with them. Which tells me, even when they were being rebellious, He still wanted to walk with them. Amen. God wants to walk with us today. Alright, let's go to verse 7. Now therefore, thus shalt you say unto my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that you should be ruler over my people Israel. Now here we get to the point here. And I have been with you 
where, with us wherever you have walked. You get the idea again? We're talking about walking with God. And have cut off all your enemies from before you. And have made you a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. God is telling David, I've walked with you. And I believe with all my heart he wants to walk with us. Amen. Now let's go to Second Chronicles, the 6th chapter. 2 Chronicles 6, verses 13 to 16. And you can say, well, you know what? Those people were special in the Bible because God walked with them. No, we're just as special in God's sight as they were because He wants to walk with us. So, 2 Chronicles 6, verse, verse 13. And here God is going to tell Solomon, I am going to bless Israel but there's something contingent on your part to do so. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled down with his knees before all the congregation of Israel and he spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in the heaven nor in the earth which keepeth covenant and showest mercy unto thy servants that walk before you with all their hearts. Now, Pastor Wayne said there's a guarantee that walk before you with all their hearts. The guarantee is, if we walk with God with all of our hearts, we're never going to fall. That's right. Now you can take that guarantee. Well, Pastor Wayne, because it is our heart that leads us to walk with God. Verse 15. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David, my father, that which you've promised him, what did he promise him? That if we walk with him with all of our heart, we're going to be walking with God. And it says also another passage, I will be with you. Amen. All right? You have promised him, you spake with your mouth, and you have fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Now here we go. Verse 16. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, Keep with your servant David, my father, that which you have promised him. What was the promise? Saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their way, what? To walk in my law as you walked before me. God wants us to walk with Him, but there are certain things that are contingent on that walk. If we went to Amos, and I'm just going to shoot myself in the foot because I have it here listed in another area, but Amos in the third chapter says, can two walk together unless what? They be agreed. And it's not God agreeing with us. It is us agreeing with God. There's something that's going to happen there. So we're going to look at five C's to walk with God successful, blessed, and fulfilled. And again, this is predicated. That might be a bad word to use for more to find. The understanding that we need to be in agreement with God. Otherwise, we can't walk with Him. He will not walk with people who sin. He can't. But he can walk with people who give their hearts and minds to Jesus Christ. So point number one on your list, number one is, and I, I've kind of gone back and forth this week on how to put this together, but I'll say number one is conviction and confession. Conviction and and confession. I was going back and forth on these things, but then it came to the point, my heart needs to be under conviction 
for me to be in confession. I can't confess what my heart is not going to give up to God. So, to walk with God, I need to recognize my hopeless situation. I can't walk with Him. He is holy. I'm sinful. I need to come before Him with a convicted heart that says, I want to walk with you. And then confess, in order for me to make the kingdom, I need to walk with God. So there's conviction and confession. And you know, sometimes, and I think especially in our generation, we're very quick to want Jesus as Lord. But that comes at the cost of my dying to self so He can live in me. Amen. So I need to be convicted and then I need to have confession. Let's go to 1 John, the first chapter, the epistle of John, 1 John. And we're going to read verses 5 to 9. 1 John 1, verses 5 to 9. We're going back to the idea of what Amos said, which I brought out. We cannot walk with God unless I admit before God He is God and I am not. Amen. That's the only way we can walk with Him. And we realize I am a sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Then I can walk with God. Okay, so 1 John 1, verses 5 to 9. And this is awesome. This gets into the love of God. This then is the message which you have heard of Him. And we declare unto you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, all right, Fellowship means what? We're going to find it. And walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You can, there are many people that like to call themselves when it's appropriate, when it feels good. Well, I'm a Christian. And there are many politicians, and I'm sorry to say, who can like to get in front of the microphone and like to look religious. Amen. And they say, well, let's pray. And I'm thinking, do you really pray in your life? Yeah. Do you know how hypocritical it looks for you to be talking like this to us? Amen. And I don't mean to be judgmental, but when you look at their life as a whole, there's something missing there. That's right. So, verse 17, But if we, what's this next word say? Walk with who? In the light, as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. You know what, brethren? Do you remember this takes me to what Jesus said? I never knew you. Depart from me. Amen. If we're walking with Jesus now, we don't have to worry about that being said to us one day. Right. We're walking with Jesus now. So he will say, Father, I know him. And that's what we want. Amen? Amen? If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. I want fellowship with Jesus. Amen. I want Him to say, Father, we know Him. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. There we're coming to the conviction and the confession. It's only through the blood of Jesus we can walk with God Amen. and have forgiveness. Are we thankful? Forgiveness of sins? That's the only way we can walk with God. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Amen. Verse 9. But here we come to the point. If we confess our sins, remember I'm talking about confession, conviction. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how we walk with God. And when our heart is right, we're not going to go astray. Now, how do we continue to do that? How do I continue to walk with God after I've made a confession? Brethren, many people fall away from the Christian life. Amen. Their hearts may have been right at one time, but they fell away. Now, hopefully the next four points are going to help us not to fall away from God. So point number two, in order to walk with God, we need courage. We need courage to walk with God. Let's go to Joshua, the first chapter. Joshua, the first chapter. And here is God speaking to Joshua about the need he's going to have in walking with God. Joshua 1 Verses 5 to 9. You know, this is, this is supposed to give us courage. We're talking about courage. Look at verse 5. And I love this because it, can we take this scripture for our own? Let's take verse 5 and say, I'm holding on to this promise. And I'm going to take courage in this promise. So verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. I take that verse for myself. No man can stand against me when I'm doing God's will. That is awesome. And I like what he says, and that's for us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I want that as my verse. Okay, let's go to verse 6. So now here God makes the inference to this covenant, which we're going to go into in a moment. He says, I'm going to be with you. Now what does he want from us? He says, be strong and of good courage. You mean it takes courage to walk with God? For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. God knew Joshua was failing in one sense, and that was courage. That's why when you look in the first chapter, God is continually saying, be of good courage. You're going to need courage. When you're walking with God, we need courage. Verse 7, only, see, now we're looking again, only be strong and very courageous. That you, why do we need courage? Look what he says, here's the answer. That you may observe to do according to all the law. Do you know, sometimes it's hard for us to obey God. Because it involves interaction with other people at times. Well, someone will say, come on, let's go out Saturday afternoon, let's go do this and this. And it takes courage for us to say, I can't. Amen. I can't do it. That's right. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper whithersoever thou goest. What is the one indication here that we need with courage? To do the law. Now let's go also look at verse 8. Here's another reason for, uh, re the reason for courage. This book of the law, that's verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. How do we maintain courage with God? His word. Amen. But you shall meditate therein day and night. And you know, I think when it comes to the issue of courage, we'll have courage if we're known we're standing on godly principles. And this is what God has given to Joshua. You're going to stand on my principles. You shall meditate therein day and night, 
that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Why do we want to do this? For then you shall make your way, what? Prosperous. And then shalt thou have good success. We, we, can, we can finish there in verse 8. So what, what is God saying? In order to walk with God, He's saying here we need courage and we need obedience. Amen. And I'm saying the courage to obey God. Because sometimes that courage is requiring of us to deny ourselves, And that takes courage. All right. If we do not walk in courage with God, we will ultimately walk away from God. All right. Point number three. We need connection with God. Connection. Here we're going back to Amos, the eighth chapter. I mean, third chapter, I'm sorry. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? There's connection there. When you walk with God, we are always saying to God, I'm walking with you. I'm walking with you. I am giving my heart up and all that I desire so I can walk with you. Let's go to Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. Colossians 2. And brethren, we're going to be judged on Judgment Day. Whether we walk with God or not. All because we know Scripture does not mean we're walking with God. The Pharisees knew Scripture very well. Remember what Jesus said? Their heart is what? Far from me. They were not walking with God. Amen. Okay. Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. As you have, so we're talking about connection with God. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. What does it say? So walk ye in Him. How do we walk with God? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen to that? We walk in Him. Rooted and built up in Him. How am I supposed to walk with Him? Through Jesus Christ, He will give us the ability to walk with Him. And established in the faith. We need faith to walk with Jesus. We need faith to walk with the Father. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. What do we need to do? We need to be obedient. We need to be rooted and built up in... How do I know? What is, what is Jesus teaching me? Read your word. That'll teach us how we're to walk with God. And we are rooted in Jesus. Jesus will help us to walk with God. We need, we need to stay connected with God. How, how can, what's another way we can look at this? We need prayer to be connected with God. Am I right on that? We were talking about prayer this morning. God doesn't want to hear some rote memorization from you. He wants your heart talking to Him. That's connection. Amen. Another way... We read this word. That keeps us connected with Him. Why? Because He talks with us through the word. When we're reading the word, He's speaking to us. That keeps us. And, and the other point that I talked about a little earlier was obedience. If we're not obedient to God, brethren, we're not walking with God. We must be obedient to Him. All right. Number four. In order to be walking with God, we need to be faithful to the covenant. The word is covenant. That's the fourth C. We need to be faithful to the covenant to walk with God. What are you talking about, a covenant? When you came here, when you came in your home, wherever it was, and you felt the conviction of spirit, upon your life. Do you remember what you said to Jesus at that time? I want to walk with you. I want you to live in my life. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. 
He took that as a covenant. To walk with God, we're walking in covenant together. He has said, I will be with you. I will bless you with spiritual gifts. I will bless you with spiritual talents. And all we have to do is say, here I am. I want to walk with you. And he will give us all of this and more. So let's go to 1 Chronicles. Going back in the Old Testament for just a moment here. 1 Chronicles 28. 1 Chronicles 28 verses 6 to 9. We need to realize we are in a covenant with God. That's how we can walk with him. How does that look like? I'm saying to God, I don't want to sin anymore. Am I right on that? I don't want to sin anymore. Which means I don't want to give place for sin in my life. Because I'm saying no to sin. Okay, 1 Chronicles 28 verse 6. 1 Chronicles 28 verse 6. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Verse 7. Moreover, I establish his kingdom forever. Now here is the if. Here's the covenant. If he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. Do you see that my walk with God is conditional on walking with Him in covenant, in obedience. Now verse 8. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. Why? That you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. Do you realize, brethren, as parents, we walk in covenant with God, what it does to our children? They see a covenant, and we're not perfect, but we're walking in covenant with God. Brethren, it's going to help them to realize there is covenant with God. Amen. And that they will walk with God. And what happens? They will receive the good of the land. I love that. That's a blessing. All right. So let's go back over the first four. The first one was courage. I mean, sorry, confession and conviction. Number two is courage. Number three is connection. Number four is covenant. And number five, which is what we've been dealing with throughout this, is we need to cooperate with God. Cooperate. That sounds like I'm going to have to yield my heart to God. Amen. To walk with Him. You know, we have been so used to, in our sinful lives, telling others... If they want to be with us, what we like, how we do things. But when we come to God, we realize God is the one who dictates this relationship. And I need to cooperate with Him. And the way we do that, brethren, is what we've been discussing, is getting into this word, into prayer, realizing I'm in a covenant walk with Him, having my heart. And you know what, brethren? I still believe we need to be, from time to time, having conviction in our hearts and lives to make sure we are walking with Him. It may be, I need to spend a little more time in prayer. I need to be reading more of the Word. So, to cooperate with God... We read that He will heal us and bless us and answer our prayers if we walk with Him. And the way I'm going to look at this, what is an example you're talking about? Uh, I don't have the scripture before me, but we're going to know this very well. Jesus in the Garden of Eden is coming to the point where He is going to struggle 
And he was struggling. We can see that he was in his physical, his physical human aspect. If it is possible for this cup to pass from me. What was he doing? He was struggling with this. Amen. If it is possible for this cup to pass from me. But then what does he say? He had to cooperate with the Father. Not my will, but your will be done. And that's what our heart needs to be saying to God. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. And when we do that, brethren, we'll be walking with God. Why? Because someone is sitting on the throne. And it's not me. It's God. And the same with your hearts and lives. In order for us to walk with God, He has to be on the throne. One final scripture, and this is 2 Peter 1. This is our closing text. 2 Peter 1. But you know what, brethren? You can say this, we can say this is going to be too hard for me. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. Who what? He'll help us to walk with Him. Do you think God is going to give us a challenge that we can't do so we fall? He wants us to walk with Him, which means He is going to do everything necessary for us to walk with Him. Amen. 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. Now, here it is. Here is God speaking to us. According as His divine power has given unto us all things. Did you get that? All. Everything that we're going to need to walk with God, He's given to us. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. You got that? This is awesome. He says, I'm going to give you everything to walk with me. Everything. What you need to give to me is your heart. Verse 4 now. And here, this is just a... This is amazing. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Hallelujah. That by these, these promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Huh? I can do it. I can walk with God. Why? And here is the secret to the meaning you realize. He wants to walk with us more than we want to walk with Him. That's right. He's given us everything. How do we do that? By giving us His Spirit, by giving us forgiveness of sins, that we have the new divine <clears throat> nature that allows me to walk with Him. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you love us. You have given us everything necessary to walk with you. Help us to have a love for you that is never ending so that we can walk with you. Help us to deny ourselves so we can have connection with our God. Help us to realize we need to be in continual confession in our hearts and lives before you because we cannot live without you, God. We can't walk without you. So help us stay connected. Help us to, Lord, experience that divine power and love that Peter was talking about here that gives us knowledge how to walk with God. And we praise you because you are good to us, so that we'll hear you on Judgment Day say, you walked with me. And we'll give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.